Hello, everyone. As I have done before, for example, with olive oil, sometimes there's either a topic or a research article that comes along that needs a more thorough examination, and it's best to do this via a PowerPoint. So this is part of my research update series, and there was this beautiful paper published in the BMJ of dietary intervention and cardiovascular disease. And it had the most wonderful infographics, for example, uh, some of which I will share for you. So here's the paper, a very important paper for clinicians, I believe. Comparison of seven popular structured dietary programs and risk of mortality and major cardiovascular events in patients who are at increased cardiovascular risk. And it was a systematic review and a network meta-analysis. And as you can see, many uh, eminent authors contributed to this and published in a top medical journal. So why do this study? Um, the impact of uh, randomized controlled trials on, of, on diet, on uh, cardiovascular death, was uncertain up to this point. I mean, the data might be there. These authors haven't generated new data. They've looked at the existing data, but the analysis was not there. And so to answer this, a multinational team of researchers identified 40 clinical trials involving a massive 35,000 plus participants who were followed for an average of three years across seven key dietary programs that are said to reduce cardiovascular risk. What were the diets? Uh, the low-fat diet, there were 18 trials. The Mediterranean diet, 12 trials. The very low-fat diet, six trials. The modified fat diet, four trials. And then there were three trials on a combined low-fat and low-sodium diet. And then there's uh, Dean Ornish's diet, three trials. And for the Pritikin diet, which was very popular a couple of decades ago, there's only the one trial. This is the first ever comparative review of such diets, and the results are hugely informative. So just to define what these diets are for you, um, the low-fat diet, uh, total fat intake is reduced to 20-30% of caloric intake and saturated fat is reduced to less than 10% of caloric intake. The very low fat, it's down to 10-20% to of caloric intake, so kind of like the reverse of the ketogenic diet. Uh, and then the combined low-fat, low-sodium diet, you also have a massive sodium reduction, less than 2.4 grams a day. The modified fat diet is increasing your polyunsaturated fatty acids, which uh, uh, many people feel is not a good idea these days, but these trials have been done. The Mediterranean diet, of course, we know, and, and especially has increased fish, fruit and vegetable intake, increased intake of mono unsaturated fats, especially olive oil, but also the Mediterranean diet involves, for example, more beans in the diet and less red meat. The Ornish diet uh, was uh, quite a strict low fresh fat diet, total fat intake reduced to less than 10% of caloric intake, and it's primarily a plant-based or vegetarian diet. Pritikin, as we know, was again a very, very low fat diet, but also quite a high carbohydrate diet, as you can see. So these seven diets were all compared to what they call minimal intervention, where the patient just kept their usual diet up and had no, or had no dietary advice and were just uh, undertaking standard medical care. So here's an infographic of the results. And uh, around the along the top, you see the illustration of the seven diets and um, <clears throat> they're numbered one to seven and down here also numbered one to seven of the same diets. 
So what you have here is from the meta-analysis and, and you see you've got this, the no effect line in the middle of each one. And then you've got the diamond and the error bars. So the, the error bars must clear the zero or no effect line uh, for the result to be significant. And don't forget, these are randomized controlled dietary trials. They're not observational epidemiological studies. The, there was actual intervention in people at cardiovascular risk with these diets. And the Mediterranean diet uh, actually stands out. So anything that is coded green has a moderate high certainty that the result is real. And as you can see, um, <clears throat> for the Mediterranean diet, all-cause mortality is down, cardiovascular mortality is down, stroke risk is down, non-fatal heart attacks are down, and they're all in the green. Now, the only thing that came near that was the low-fat diet, which, interestingly, while it reduced all-cause mortality, it didn't actually reduce cardiovascular risk or stroke. It did also just not much compared to the Mediterranean diet reduce non-fatal myocardial infarction. So how does that translate in terms of, you know, fewer heart attacks, lives saved, and so on? Well, the authors did two types of analyses. So the, this first analysis was people who at baseline had an intermediate cardiovascular risk. And again, the green, we're looking at results that had a moderate to high certainty. And if we look at the Mediterranean diet, there would be 17 fewer deaths per thousand overall over the study period, 13 of those due to um, uh, fewer deaths due to cardiovascular mortality, seven fewer due to stroke, which is which is quite interesting because seven and 13 doesn't total 20, but these are the complexities you often get with the statistics. And 17 per thousand fewer non-fatal heart attacks. It's when we get to the high-risk people that the results are extraordinary. All-cause mortality down 36 per 1,000, cardiovascular mortality down 39 per 1,000, stroke risk down 16 per 1,000, and non-fatal heart attacks down 42 per 1,000. These are better results than you can get with any drug, and it's just a simple dietary adjustment. And it makes you wonder, given this high level of evidence now, why this is not now part of standard care that patients are being recommended the Mediterranean diet. Now, the authors did make some qualifying factors about their study quality and limitations. Um, and what you do is you do a risk of bias analysis for the clinical trials. The Cochrane standard has uh, uh, guidelines for how you do risk of bias. Um, and unfortunately, 27 of the trials did have a high risk of bias, so that weakens the evidence a bit. Also, they felt that other limitations, including included being unable to measure adherence to dietary programs, and that the possibility that some of the observed benefits may have been due to other elements within the program, such as possible drug intervention or support to uh, stop smoking. Nonetheless, the Mediterranean diet is a clear winner based on this very thorough and comprehensive analysis of the evidence. And that's certainly going to be guiding my clinical practice and my dietary advice to patients, especially those who are at high cardiovascular risk.